Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our another session. Today, our session name is The Future of Work and Women Entrepreneurship. We have talked about today, after opening the session, the women entrepreneurship challenges, opportunities, startups, scale up funding, and so many things. But as a women entrepreneur, you can be an entrepreneur by working at your workplace. So there are some other technologies that have come and changed the workplace. Today, our main discussion topic is on these things. So how the work will change in future and how the women entrepreneurs need to adapt with their change. For discussing, we have very renowned female entrepreneurs and leaders. Now, I would like to welcome you to our session and I would like to invite you to know more about our panelists. So first of all, I would like to introduce Haifa Adidas, who is the CEO and the founder of Instagram.co. Next, hi Haifa. Hi. <laughs> Next, we have Patricia Roosh, who is the Senior Advisor for Startup Genome. Next, we have uh, Heidi Badawe, who is a doctor and who is the founder of Future Steam Planner. Okay, so hi, Patricia and Heidi. Welcome you to all in our today's session. <clears throat> So as we are talking about before going into the our main session, I would like to say that, can you please share a little bit about yourself? Is your venture about with our audience? Starting with Haifa. Uh, my name is Haifa Adas and uh, my journey started with my passion for beauty. Uh, from uh, my mom, who was uh, a makeup artist and hairstylist, to uh, working and starting my career, uh, handling like brands and uh, dealing mainly with uh, uh, ex makeup artist, hairstylist, with cousins for beauty on demand. And ladies can select their working hours and locations. So we try to adapt to uh, what we're going to talk about later in this session. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, your look actually tell us about your venture. Yes. Uh, OK. Now I would like to invite Patricia Roosh for her interaction. Hi, Beauty. Many thanks for the kind words. Uh, my name is Patricia Roosh. Um, I'm not an entrepreneur myself, but throughout my career, I have been in positions to uh, support women entrepreneurs. Uh, I worked at the World Economic Forum and United Nations. I did an MBA at Oxford University and right now work at a boutique government advisory company uh, based in Berlin that aims at promoting um, startup ecosystem development with a particular focus on women entrepreneurs. Very happy to be here with the, the distinguished panelists today. Okay, thank you. We are happy to have you. Next, Heidi, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thank you very much, and beautiful panelists, for being here today. Um, I'm a scientist by training. Uh, I started my uh, career in entrepreneurship and the STEM entrepreneurship uh, from the age of 10. I was actually representing several countries in Science Olympiad and the Science Club and the notion of empowering people by science and what the STEM stands for, uh, science, mathematics, art and engineering and medicine as well. So uh, all the scientific, uh, scientific sort of skills to empower people. So uh, started very early at the age of 10, now approaching 40, and proud to stay my age because um, 
having uh, all uh, through my life success story to empowering the science, empowering people working with science. And the other hat I am wearing at the moment, which is leadership and management, where I actually received lately from Australian government the inaugural women award for uh, board directorship, where I actually sit on five boards in Australia in different sectors of science and leadership and management and informing the government directly and indirectly in decision making about the STEM. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. So. Now we'd like to talk about uh, the main point of our session, that is our future work and the women entrepreneurship. So you know that because of the changing nature of the society and even the global economy, the work pattern has been changed and it is changing day by day. Even here, uh, you know that uh, beauty products uh, were not available earlier. And now people can have it by sitting at home. So in the future for the women entrepreneurs, starting with Haifa. Yes, uh, uh, like in the automation age, women face new challenges. Let alone what challenges we already had, we added the technology and the automation uh, challenge. Uh, on, of course, it's for men and women, and we all have to be skilled with, uh, with new t uh, skills to be able to adapt and live with the technology. For instance, in many countries, women account for more than 70% of workers in healthcare and social assistance, but less than 25% of machine operators and craft workers are uh, like uh, as, as women. So uh, men and women tend to cluster in different occupation in both mature and emerging economies. In a scenario where automation unfolds on the scale of past technological disruptions, women and men could face job disruption and displacement uh, and potential job gains and job losses. Uh, I'm just going to talk about, as you said, uh, beauty, where you can have any product now with uh, like automation and uh, availability online. We can order products from around the world and receive them in a day or maximum a week. Um, in terms of automation and to make this transition, women will need new skills. So uh, we have to focus more and more on education and getting ourselves ready uh, to help eliminate the digital gender uh, divide that it, it might happen. Because in so many underdeveloped countries, uh, uh, women were focused more on du other duties than being online and getting the education and the development we need for this new era. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what is your evaluation on that issue, Patricia? Yeah, thanks for calling me, Lindsay. Um, so you mentioned in uh, the beginning that you think that automation, or some might claim that automation um, is actually causing significant gender parity in more and more industries. Um, I would, however, like to challenge this assumption. And of course, only speaking about the industry that I know, which is uh, tech startups and entrepreneurship in general. Um, a lot of companies claim to be a gender parity, but then my uh, request is at what level? Because what we see more and more is that they hire women, but they hire women as, you know, cler in clerical jobs, in assistant positions, uh, while senior management is predominantly male. Um, and there's some very, very interesting studies on this, um, taking boards of directors as a benchmark, right? So we all know that diverse uh, boards means better business. Um, at the same time, uh, there, there's a lot of studies that show actually uh, dismal results uh, in terms of female represent, representations on boards of directors. Uh, in the US, for example, there's one in five company directors on publicly listed companies that is female. Um, there was a recent report by uh, Crunchbase and the Kellogg University that showed that this data is actually even worse for private companies, so companies that are not listed on the stock exchange. 
um, in the US, and the study is from 2019, so it's fairly recent, 60% um, of the companies that they dissected did not have a single woman on the board. Um, only 7% of board seats were held by women, and if they had a female director on the board, they mostly held an independent seat. Um, so in comparison, none of the boards of, you know, in the US S&P 500 companies are all male. So I think the, the message of this uh, story is that there's really a clear case for action um, on governmental as well as, you know, from the private side. Um, I'm a German national. Here in Germany, we have mandatory quotas for publicly listed companies when it comes to board members. Uh, maybe in your countries as well, I'm not uh, very certain, but here 30% of board members uh, of listed companies have to be female. So you can say whatever you want about quotas, I'm also not, you know, 100% in favor, but it has triggered some rightful change towards having women more in managerial positions and less as a, you know, a token employee uh, as the receptionist, for example. So uh, still a long way to go. And definitely an area that needs um, proactive engagement and action from all of us. Yes, uh, you talked about the right thing. The engagement should be there for the women at their workplace. So now, Heidi, so can you please tell us a little bit about these things, the automation and the flourishing of technology? Actually, either it is hampering or it's beneficial for the, the at the workplace. Muted. Heidi, you're muted. Sorry, uh, talking about uh, automation and the talking about uh, actually the future which is here, uh, by co-creating it, it's uh, the main message we should actually all adopt today. So co-creating the integration of uh, what we have in our hands and posing and reflecting on what we have as all the style and the traditional um, practices which doesn't work to feed uh, into uh, improving the practices of automation, it's really important. And what I mean by that, digging deep into positive, um, because it seems that on boards and on decision-making tables, we dig and dwell into negatives more than we taking time into the positivity and positive practices in the place. So, um, and it's really hurting my feeling and it disheartening me that we still up to now fighting for our uh, gender gap and the representation on boards without grabbing it and being strong and fearless and actually grabbing our position without even in discussing it so let's uh, start to change the language from we want to be equal uh, we will be equal and no matter what we will be there and the big actually um, uh, sort of proof for it today having this diverse lovely uh, panel uh, working in harmony from different areas and they try to complete the picture and to complete the puzzle together. So people will be uh, sitting, uh, watching this panel and saying, what beauty has to do with UN and with science and the STEM? But uh, the bigger picture, the, the integration and the complementary sort of efforts of all of that together, creating the future which we want. Integration is about complementing each other. It's about innovation thinking outside the box so it's a, a great invitation for thinking outside the box without saying it doing it so let's do it for everything sake please let's do it and act on it we are capable as women in negotiation and speaking about the stats we are the best negotiators and i think the covid and the disaster management to prove us that we really can manage very hard situations by our multitasking sort of um, inherent and genes of women being multitasked, a wife and a mother and a daughter at home, and she is a capable CEO who is very confident of doing her work. So um, the answer, in short, it's in integration and in education and future outside the box creativity, uh, thinking tools to adopt. 
Thank you. Great, Heidi. Uh, it was nice to hear from you. You talked about uh, one important thing, the integration. Even in our previous session, we got to know that education is important. Whether you are at home, whether you are at your workplace or entrepreneurial activities. So in our uh, workplace, if as a woman, if I work over there, so I will not be called an entrepreneur. So sometimes a new term has been initiated or it is, that is called entrepreneurship. So how can women change their or lifestyle or they can change their improve their lifestyle right being an entrepreneur starting with haifa yeah uh women uh, uh we, we are born as the heidi mentioned uh, uh, multitasker and uh, entrepreneurs by uh, default uh, what I would recommend, and I always try to push uh, every woman I know, or I, I try to inspire by taking charge of our lives and getting as much uh, educated as we can and in any way or form that we have access to. And the main thing that will make us always stronger, I'm not being like against men or anything, but I'm just saying that uh, uh, for uh, uh, to make the workplace a better place for women, for other females, we need to support each other. We need need to believe in each other and hire more uh, female, of course, qualified uh, female in our uh, companies as a startup, as a, an established business. Always be brave, fight for our rights, and. Uh, 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 Wherever we are, we can introduce change by educating people around us. Um, for like the um, the question was, how can we change our situation and women's situation by understanding and uh, um, like making sure at each company you work for, let's say that maternity leave, all the other um, like. Uh, I'm not going to say female rights, but human rights should be implemented so the uh, people can uh, provide better and do their business in a better way. So we, we started with all HR uh, uh, discussions and move into how we can support other women and empower other colleagues of ours. Thank you, Haifa. Now, Patricia. Can you please say something uh, on this issue? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Beauty. Also, thank you, Haifa. Excellent points, and I would actually like to build on this. I think it's an area where we can actually learn a lot from uh, men when it comes to networking. So I spent the last two years in the UK, um, or a couple of years ago, <laughs> that way. Um, uh, anyways, I spent some time in the UK where there's a lot of gentlemen's clubs, a lot of networking events that are just you know, seem to be traditionally in the hands of, of men. And of course, things are changing. Women are making more of a, of a stance as we as time progresses. However, I see it wherever I go that there are these networks that men built um, and support each other, maybe unconsciously, that maybe women don't yet have. So I think what we really need to emphasize is that women support other women and don't bring them down. So very practical if you work in a company make sure you support all the women that are around you make sure you uh, advocate for parity or for female leadership wherever possible make sure you maybe mentor um, some of your, your junior colleagues when you can um, yeah just the other day we um, uh, started james in my company uh, we were working with a client in australia um, the government client and she said that you know on the topic of gender parity she said that you know we don't have mandatory quotas um, to have women in certain positions or to have enough women for example speaking on a panel but what we do we have um, voluntary 50 50 quotas that are however checked on in front of everyone else so that means if you do whatever activity, let's say you organize a panel and you only have one lady and uh, maybe five men, you will be called out for this and you have to justify yourself why there is no gender parity. And just this fact, you know, by making it visible, 
um, makes people think and makes people really strive towards including everyone and not leaving half of the population out. So I think by you know raising awareness is a big term, but by raising awareness and actually making it visible, even if it's just voluntary um, quotas uh, that are addressed in the plenary, we can go a very, very long way. And then reiterate to my first point, women supporting women is what's going to bring us um, as far as, as possible. Yeah. So you were talking about this supporting women by women. Yes, that's the one of the important issue because if we do not support ourselves, then uh, everybody will come and see the gap that we have. So my question also the same to you, to Heidi. How do you evaluate these things? The automation, the, the e technological sector, how it is hampering or the beneficial for the women entrepreneurs? Uh, I feel that uh, we are very lucky uh, nowadays. Uh, people seeing uh, what's happening lately in terms of uh, COVID as a massive uh, sort of uh, distraction. But I can see it's a great opportunity for uh, posing and reflecting on uh, searching the N word for better sort of uh, solutions and uh, to, to, to navigate smartly as women. And I can't emphasize more as uh, Patricia said and the Haifa that women supporting women, one of the key strategies to overcome any sort of uh, adversity or any um, issue, uh, we have to support each other. The other thing which I would like to emphasize as well on, let's celebrate the men role model in our workplaces who support women, who give women a chance to shine. Because there are men also, uh, we learn from, and we as women, we should adopt sometimes, but to, on balance, some masculine sort of characters and leadership characters to help us. So uh, we are very good in multitasking, but we are not good in focusing on task. We are really good, and I will not be biased here, it's not black and white, but we should actually seek help uh, and to seek the, the, the competences which the men excelling in, because if we adopt those skills and the competencies, it will help us actually in thriving. Being in several women communities of thousands of women, we always have this question asking ourselves, uh, it's like imposter syndrome or perfectionist, being perfectionist, I'm doing enough, is that I am on right track. And uh, it's interesting that I've been in a Nobel Prize sort of um, a place and a couple of ladies have a Nobel Prize and they've been asking, are we leaving a legacy? Are we creating an impact? I said, if you ask this question, what about us looking forward to be someone like you will be asking. So this is a continuous reflection of women. So we need to stop the imposter syndrome. We need to stop uh, being perfectionist and to celebrate the success. Uh, one of the great books I'm inspired by, by James Clear right now, it's called Atomic Habits. We're actually saying that you should actually celebrate every tiny success, celebrating a session like today and being among the great women who are changing the world in some sort of um, different careers and different sections. It's a celebration. So we should start to actually celebrate our tiny achievements, even if it's a webinar, even if it's a conference, even if it's a talk to our community, local community. So celebrating our achievements, no matter how tiny it is, stop being a perfectionist and um, highlight the men who are actually the pioneers behind our success and the thrive together, work together, lovely um, women of the world. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heidi. Uh, three of you actually focused on the one thing, supporting women by women. Okay. Now my question to Haifa is that, as we are talking about the workplace situations, so how can the companies take actions so that uh, not only to help workers, but also help them to grow for the future of work? Because the future of work is very different than the work that we have now. And you can see that the work, even in 2019, the, the work was different in 2020. So how the companies can take actions on these issues? 
very, very good question. And Patricia touched on this uh, earlier. Uh, diversity brings value, uh, both social and economic. Uh, greater inclusion of women is, uh, sorry, greater inclusion of women in, in inventive activities is good not only for women themselves or for the company or it, it, it builds a stronger, it gives, sorry, but also for stronger economic growth and enhanced social well-being. Uh, gender equality should be viewed not as an implemented thing or a new initiative that is taken. Uh, it should be uh, uh, as a business imperative to increase productivity and as uh, Heidi said, not to miss on, I think, or uh, Patricia, not to miss on 50% of the population. Uh, companies, uh, we've been through a lot, let alone the past uh, few months with COVID-19. There are people that have core values and are consistent with the company's vision. Hire for culture and what they believe, like what they believe in, and what they build in, and the respect that they have to each member of the society. Um, the search for female talent must be embedded in uh, in overall human capacity and uh, in any capital strategy to build a company. We have to lead by example and not only have it as um, uh, like saying or as uh, no goals, uh, like women empowerment and uh, equality. We need to really lead by example and have the company culture speak for itself, itself. in terms of uh, uh, like, let's say they're starting now, they can have a salary review if it's not. There's no way, like I remember when I was at L'Oréal, there was so much difference between a woman in the same position, a woman's salary and uh, her uh, colleague uh, male. And I'm glad to say today that this is changing for sure. At least I know at uh, like the, in the beauty industry, women are really pioneering and becoming like on the board and leading roles. Uh, again, I'll mention about the paternity and maternity leaves and how to capitalize on uh, gender diversity. Action must be taken in each company and in every division, not only in HR or in marketing, because women can like do much more than that. We need to create a culture of shared uh, accountability. Uh, business owners should create a culture of shared ac accountability where uh, non-compliance is not accepted at all on any level in the company. And well-defined practices and measures of success needs to be implemented in every section of the business. I'm sorry if I'm taking too long, but I have so much to say on this. And uh, my last point is that ownership is a key. We need to walk the talk and have it uh, start with our days and how we raise our children. Uh, about how to treat uh, women and uh, men. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Haifa. Now, Patricia. Yes, uh, you have uh, worked with some of the data uh, from the startup genome. I know that. So, can you please tell us a little bit about these things? That the, what is the situation of the workplace and what should be the, the future work of the women? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for a very, very interesting um, question. So the current pandemic has really overthrown the way um, white collar work is done. I think just the situation right now is testament to this. Maybe in normal times we'd all be together in one conference hall, or at least, you know, doing this, uh, delivering these speeches from our offices and not our living rooms. So um, it has really changed the way we work and live. And what is super, super interesting, and I'll tell you right away, I don't have an answer to this right now, is how this um, influenced the role of women um, in the household or in, in careers in general when, um, you know, people work from home. I've seen or I've read articles saying that the burden on women is now even higher because in addition to, you know, working their full-time job, they have to, you know, take care of kids because schools are closed in many um, areas of the world. 
um, husbands most of the time seem to claim the, the working area, working rooms in the house, where uh, whereas women work from the kitchen table or the living room, or I don't know. So you know, this is anecdotal evidence. I don't want to make any claims on this. It's just things I've read and heard. This is one way. It could also be influencing us, on, you know, in, in other ways and be a great equalizer. I don't, we don't know yet. At least I don't, and I'm very, very. Um, excited and looking forward to seeing how these fundamental shifts in the way we work will actually play out and what kind of um, uh, what kind of consequence that'll have for women so this is one thing now you asked about data uh, since i work for a data research and advisory company and um, since we have a lot of entrepreneurs here it's an entrepreneurship congress i'd like to comment a bit on the vc uh, industry venture capital so i think as you surely know if you're an entrepreneur female or male um, at some stage you need to start uh, to raise money to get some capital to get uh, investment and if you are starting out, this is mostly from angels or then from venture capitalists. Um, we know that women only get about 3% of venture capital. I mean, companies with female CEOs only tap into 3% of venture capital funding, which is incredibly low. Um, what's very, very interesting is to look at the other side of the table. So actually look at VC funds and the composition of VC funds. Because one theory that we found to hold true is that you know people like um, people that speak or look like themselves, very simplified. That means, for example, men would like to invest in other men that maybe have similar degrees, that have similar names, similar backgrounds. And this is one fundamental issue uh, that a, a bunch of studies have proven why women don't get as much funding as men do, it's because we see teams are comprised of males. Uh, and it's many males that, um, you know, uh, have exited their companies, they are the former C-suite teams of, of companies, they exit, they have a lot of money, they angel investors or they go raise funds, and then they invest in other men that start companies, maybe similar to the companies they started. Um, I don't know, Haifa, it would be interesting to see what kind of experiences you have made, if you've raised money, if you've faced the issue that maybe investors are mainly male, but they even understand the market for something such as beauty that they've never used themselves, that they haven't been in touch with. Um, so I think in order to find a solution to this problem, we have to look at, I mean, the examples serve to show that we have to look at various angles within a problem. So yes, we were entrepreneurs, but then also, what is the problem? They don't get enough money to bring businesses on the next level and scale. And this is, in my opinion, and what many studies show, deeply rooted in um, the way that investor teams work, culture, which is just uh, favoring males. Um, so uh, the, the point I wanted to make is that to ensure that more women entrepreneurs are funded, we do need more women on the investing side, side of the table who are committed to investing in women. So um, sustainable, systemic change that actually is lasting um, means that we have to look at the problem from as many angles as possible and work together to find a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia. Uh, same question if I asked to Heidi. Okay, so what would you say about this thing? Um, I would say um, it's always the, the last who can't say anything, Doctor. How I can actually wrap it up after uh, Haifa and Patricia. Uh, um, thank you for introducing us to the concepts of sustainability because I will start finding solutions. Sustainability is really important in anything we do. So we only uh, securing future sort of uh, solutions and current solutions as well. So, um, and we have a great framework already set up by the UN, which is uh, SDG framework, the 17 goals, as an example of um, that have been used in the place in the last time. Yes, it became uh, out of use, especially during the COVID, and it has some uh, misuses to it. But I feel that there are lots and lots of room to practice more in the goals in very effective way and the co-creation again and the integration between goals. So the 17 goals, they are not in isolation of each other like poverty, it's not in isolation from health, it's not in isolation from education. So it's a time actually to do 
speak uh, in and start to co-create new goals together and mix and match the goals which will help uh, entrepreneurs in their uh, company or in their fiction or in their area of focus. So um, I will talk about two things, the framework which we should go on, which is the SDG and um, uh, that actually the inner uh, sort of investment in inward and having gratitude and kindness and positive side embedded into our workplaces. It seems that uh, for a long time, we actually ignoring our well-being and uh, ignoring that if we are good and we actually uh, psychologically stable, we will do good for the places we work on. So it's time for uh, leaders to emphasize on areas like emotional intelligence and uh, diversity intelligence and um, inclusion, including everyone on the table, including people with disabilities, including people who are from less advantaged community to have their say. Include our stakeholders and the clients in our decision making. Very important to have your client in the center of your attention because you will have your game change straight away when you have your client in the center of your attention. And I didn't think that any entrepreneur uh, failed when they have their clients uh, in their uh, brain all the time and in heart as well. So aligning the heart and the brain to serve you and to serve the whole you, it's really important. So, um, and in simple, in a sim way, uh, we call it, we will use the left and the right brain. So we not only, if I'm like, for example, I'll give example by me, I'm a scientist by training. So um, it seems that I'm using the analytical, mathematical, scientific brain, but I found out that I'm striving more when I actually invite more into literature, heart, and psychology uh, into my leadership style. Uh, going away from decentralized sort of leadership and having an, an open door uh, policy, having a transformational leadership as well, which we're actually evolving all the time and having the green ecosystem in my workplace, it helps a lot to listen to the feedback, being an active listener all the time, motivate the people around me and motivate myself, getting out of my bed every day and saying, today will be a great day, today I will achieve a lot. Going through affirmation and um, happiness and joy in everything I do, it makes a huge difference. So it's time to have those heart warmer and the brain stretcher um, topics into our board table. It's time to implement diversity intelligence. It's time to have EQ say at the max. It's time actually to uh, adopt more um, outside of the book and the creative thinking strategies. It's time for sustainability to create the future we want. So future in short, it will be in our hands by co-creating it. We can't predict it, but we can actually co-create it together while we're thriving in our journey. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Heidi. So, so many important notes I have taken from your session. Amazing. Uh, hopefully, our audience also learned so many things from you. So, last few words I would like to know from you about the future work. In which sectors the women entrepreneurs should look on? So, starting with Haifa. Just uh, within just few words. Yeah, you mean like what women should uh, start uh, businesses in? Business end. You can talk about business and you can talk about the workplace. Okay. So how they are going to create a positive vibe in the society. They are the significant person. Although they are the significant person, but how can they can more creative, more take the more leadership actions? Uh, we have to be patient and uh, take uh, lean, uh, like lean in and start taking responsibility. Uh, I, like, we're not going to repeat ourselves, but education is important and learning in every field and adopting to the technology and what's happening around the world. And I think the secret to any human being success is to do what they love and what they're passionate about. So it doesn't matter, male or female, 
when the, we need to uh, feel empowered and believe that we can do whatever we want or, uh, or we have passion uh, towards and just start and don't be afraid ask for help ask other women uh, and be out there okay thank you Haifa. any final remarks patricia um i think when i when I ask for advice for concrete industries that i think will be flourishing in the future i would say anything that is digital or related to technology so maybe if you're a woman who has lost her job right now if you find yourself furloughed uh, which is something a lot of countries uh, have implemented um why don't we start an online business or do something using or harnessing the power of technology it could be an e-commerce you know selling some anything you have produced or your import from from uh, elsewhere um it could be teaching online it could be you know, literally anything you can do with the power of the internet from the computer of your own. So when asked about industries um, or jobs for the future, I think anyone who is savvy um, to use modern technology, who can use, maybe you could be a graphic designer working from home, uh, designing uh, logos, designing anything you want on, on Photoshop, etc. But try and harness the power of technologies because I think we've all seen that in the past months we were forced to work from home. It has its challenges, but it does work one way or the other. So um, use the power of technology, the internet, um, to just make sure you come out of this winning. Thank you. Uh, Heidi, would you like to say something? Yeah, I would say uh, practice a lot self-love and celebrate your uniqueness and the confidence and self-esteem. Once you uh, know your self-worth, actually the whole universe will serve you. So uh, just believe in this notion that once you know what you're worth in this uh, universe, the whole universe will work. For you and we can see that lots of women who saw that there is a ceiling for their dreams they broke the ceiling you can see this in politics and you can see it everywhere there are lots of women broke the ceiling so let's do it and let's love ourselves more because we are unique and are great in all forms and ways thank you <laughs> Thank you so much, Heidi. I loved the line that we are unique and we need to make this unity. The key takeaways from this session is that, that you need to focus on the technological thing. Who are watching us, those who are listening us, please focus on the challenges that we are facing today. In the future, you need to work on that issue. If you can survive in today's world, you will be able to survive in the future as well. But remember that for the sustainable development, you have to support yourself and your partners as well. That's the key thing that we have learned today. Thank you, our panelists, for giving us their valuable time and giving us so many important lessons for our future entrepreneurs and leaders. Thank you all and thank you all the audience for joining us. Hope to see you in our next program.